So let me get into the demo now. And uh, let me start uh, talking about the individual reports on each dashboard page. So for the purpose of demo, what we've done is we've assumed a typical business scenario where my company manufactures different models of desktops and notebooks. And we've built about four dashboard pages with a bunch of reports on each page. And there's a specific reason why those reports are on those specific pages. Uh, when I'm giving the demo, I would like to um, uh, just bring one thing over uh, to the discussion that the actual numbers in the reports may not make sense because this is a mock-up data that we've created for a demo purpose. What we need to understand is the functionality provided by this report and what are the business questions that can be answered by using these reports. All right, let's start with the demo now. Uh, on the top is what we or uh, is what you're seeing as the um, prompts. Now, prompts are different dimensions that you can use to slice and dice your uh, report information or the manufacturing information in this case. For example, I want to analyze the manufacturing information for a particular period. Well, if that is what you really want, all you've got to do is choose a particular period from the period name prompt. In this case, I have selected a period called November 08, which means I'm limiting my analysis to a particular period, November 08, and all the information will be sliced for that particular period. Just like period, you could do your analysis for a particular organization or even for a particular entity. All right, on the overview page, we have a bunch of reports and the first report is called the key indicators completed job. Key indicators are the summary level indicators. That is, just by looking at these metrics, you will know how your manufacturing organization is performing. For example, the different color codes are the different organizations in my company. Blue is my Boston manufacturing, red is my New Orleans manufacturing, so on and so forth with the other colors. The metrics that we are talking about are total material amount, total resource amount, overhead amount, and in fact, even we also show the over percentage overhead and percentage scrap. Let's look at the first few. So what this tells me is the color red corresponds to my New Orleans manufacturing. So New Orleans manufacturing has spent about $31,613.5 on material, and it has spent about $16,699 on resource. If you compare New Orleans to, say, my Seattle manufacturing, Seattle manufacturing has spent about 14,342 on material. So clearly, just by looking at the first two metrics, I'm able to understand that for some reason, my New Orleans manufacturing is spending a lot of amount on material and resource compared to my other organization, even though they are producing the same product, which means the business process or the manufacturing process followed in New Orleans organization is not same as the process followed in my other organization because of which it is eating up a lot of cost on material and resource. Clearly, if I'm a manufacturing uh, manager or the owner of this company, the message that I get from this report is New Orleans ARG is not performing on par with my other organizations. I will have to review the business process or in fact talk to the folks in that company to understand what is going wrong and what are the steps that I can take to bring New Orleans on par with my Boston manufacturing or Seattle manufacturing organization. On the same lens, you can even look at the scrap percentage or the overview percentage. Color red is highlighted here again because something's wrong with my New Orleans manufacturing. Let's move to the next report called period balance. Period balance is the actual uh, expenditure or the total uh, expenditure on the manufacturing by organization. Again, New Orleans is standing tall because that is where most of my expenditure is going. What I'll do is I'll try to show you some details of how we can drill down and analyze what are the actual entities or jobs that are making up this number. So let me get into the detailed report here first. Okay, we saw a huge number for New Orleans organization in the previous screen. This report gives me a breakdown of how much of that corresponds to discrete jobs and how much of that corresponds to repetitive jobs. 
let's assume my company does both discrete and repetitive because of which you are seeing different types of jobs here. Now that I know that I've spent about 28,304 on discrete jobs, let me get into further details. What you see in the third report is it gives you a cost breakdown by different entity. As I was mentioning earlier, my company is into the production of different models of notebooks, that is desktops and laptops. So this tells me that to manufacture a particular model of notebook called 2331, I have spent this much on material, this much on resource, this much on overhead, scrap and outside processing. So this is an extremely useful report because we started off at a very high level where we said your New Orleans organization has spent X amount of dollars in a given period and we've drilled down all the way to the actual entities produced in the New Orleans org and a cost breakdown at that entity level. So customers can use this report to understand not only their expenditure, but also a breakdown all the way at the entity level to see, okay, to, in the process of manufacturing this model of laptop, I have spent X amount of dollars on material resource overhead or outside processing. So that is the overview page. Let's get into the open jobs. Okay, now if you remember the typical business questions that I was talking about earlier, the first question was, what percentage of my jobs are open? That is a very important question because that will help you to understand in what cycle of manufacturing or what is the state of the manufacturing and will you be able to meet your customer's order within the promise state. Let's see how the reports on this page can help us answer the open job related question. The first report is the key indicator. Key indicator, just like uh, the previous page, we have metrics which gives us the summary level information about the metrics or the processes that we are trying to understand here. Again, different color codes are the different organizations. And the metrics that we are talking about are quantity in queue, quantity running, quantity on hold, number of open jobs, number of late jobs. So if you look at this, this tells me that color blue maps to my Boston manufacturing. And Boston manufacturing has got a bunch of orders sitting in queue. Now, Ideally, you wouldn't expect to see a lot of orders sitting in queue because if they are sitting in queue, for some reason, they are not progressing further. That is, either they are, you don't have enough resources to work on the jobs and because of that, they are sitting in queue or there is something else going wrong. So as a guy or as a manager of this company, what I would do is work with my Boston Manufacturing to understand why do I have so many jobs sitting in queue? What can I do to expedite this process and ensure that most of my jobs are running and completing on time. On the same line, let's look at the open job metric. So this tells me 28 jobs in Boston manufacturing are still open, but only about eight jobs in my New Orleans are still open. So as soon as I see this number 28, I get a picture that, okay, most of my jobs are not completing in Boston manufacturing because of X, Y, Z reason. Now the action item from this report is to understand why are there so many open jobs and what can I do to ensure that they are making progress in terms of uh, meeting the deadlines or the promise stage. Few other important reports on this page are the current production delayed and resource availability. If you look at current production delayed, we are showing the number of open jobs to number of late jobs and what percentage of the jobs are late. So if you look at this Boston manufacturing information, we are showing that we have 28 open jobs of which 24 are running late. Now, definitely not a good sign if I own Boston manufacturing organization because more than half or close to 80, 90% of my jobs are running late. Well, what I would like to do is to understand why do I have so many late jobs? What is really going wrong in my company? What I would do is I would just click on my late jobs and this will give you a breakdown of what are the different entities that you're trying to manufacture which are causing the late jobs. So like I was mentioning earlier, this is a mock-up data, so a quantity of zero wouldn't make sense here. But in the real world, what you would see or what you understand from this report is 
your Boston Manufacturing is trying to manufacture notebooks of this specific module 2334. And in the process of manufacturing this notebook, most of the jobs are running late. Now, what are the reasons uh, that a job can run late? For example, you are waiting for your vendor to ship some of the products that you've already paid for and that has not yet reached your shop floor. So you're just waiting on that and the job is running late. Or you do not have enough resources to really fulfill the orders or actually process the manufacturing production because of that the jobs are running late. Well, these are just few of the reasons why your job is running late. And as a manager, I will try to work with the team who are involved in this manufacturing entity to ensure those jobs are going fine. Let's get back to the page, previous page. Okay, so that was about the open jobs. Now let's look at some valuation and utilization. Getting back to the business questions that I was talking earlier. Some of the other typical business questions were, what percentage of my production is ending up as crap? What can I do to minimize this crap? So first of all, to understand, can I minimize this crap? I need to understand how much crap am I producing? What percentage of the total production is ending up as crap? So that is the question we are trying to answer. We, the reports on this page were built specifically keeping that in mind. So let's look at the reports first. So quantity completed, cramped, and rejected. This tells you what was the quantity that got rejected, how much was really completed, and what percentage or what was the total quantity that ended up as crap. So in an ideal world, you would like to see, say, 100 jobs got completed of which, say, 1 or 2% was crap. But if you're not seeing that, and in turn, if you're seeing, say, 20, 30% ending as crap, that means something must be done in the production process so that you don't produce that much of scrap. Let's look at this report called scrap valuation. In scrap valuation, we tell this, we in fact show the scrap quantity to scrap value and scrap value percentage. So it tells me that by organization, for example, in my Seattle manufacturing, I have generated a scrap quantity of 2,420, uh, 2420 and the value of that scrap amounts to so much which means this is not a good picture if I own that company as it gives me a message that the whole chunk of production or a majority of the production happening in my organization is ending in crap. Some of the other reports on this page are late production, on-time production and percentage on-time production. Again on-time production is a very um, crucial metric because it tells you how many jobs are really completing on time. Just to look at some of the details of that report, if I just drill down on the report, it tells me that you are manufacturing these models of desktops in your uh, company and by entity. Here is the on-time production unit and here's the percentage on-time production. So uh, this gives me some idea as to in the process of manufacturing this model of desktop, I am seeing that only 4.2 percentage of uh, percent of my jobs are really on time. So it gives me an idea as to what is the efficiency of my company in manufacturing different types of entities or different kinds of products in my organization. We also have a report which shows the top five organizations by late completion. Let's say my company structure is such that I've got five or 10 different manufacturing organization. I can use a report like this, which compares the production efficiency or the late completion by different orgs in my company. Let's get into the costing uh, part of our analysis. So uh, getting back to the business questions that I was talking earlier, some of the typical business questions can be, can I, analyze the costing account information and really reconcile that with GL. Because as I mentioned earlier, these are the reports the finance guys would love to see because it makes their job so much more easier. Looking at this report called costing account balances. Typical report which gives you the costing account closing balances by period. What we've done is we've taken a particular period called November 08 and for this period, here are the different manufacturing accounts and the closing balances. So this tells me in my New Orleans org, 
blue corresponds to resource account. So resource account had a closing balance of 16,699 for November 08. On the same line, I have different account balances by different arc. So uh, let's take a typical scenario where users have uh, transferred this information to GL and, and after the period is closed, they're not able to match numbers. What they would do is they would run this report in manufacturing from our dashboard and they could also run a, a report like an account analysis or any other reconciliation report that they would use on the GL side, and then they could start matching the numbers. Let's assume the numbers are not matching. They could drill down further to understand what is really causing the problem. Another business question uh, that we were talking about was manufacturing entity cost analysis. That is, to manufacture one desktop, if I'm shelling out $200, I need a breakdown of what were the costs that were, that I really had to incur based on or breakdown by cost elements. So here are the typical cost elements that I'm using in my company, that is material resource overhead scrap outside processing. And if I take a specific example, this model of notebook called 2332, to manufacture 2332, I had to spend about 12,500 on material, 7,000 and resource, 2,100 on overhead, so on and so forth. So by product, it gives you a cost breakdown by cost element. A very useful report because I can understand what are the areas that I need to really improve or change in my business so that I can reduce the cost or increase my profitability by incurring a lesser cost by product. Some of the other uh, useful reports on this page are average product cost by cost element and cost breakdown by cost element. Let's, uh, let's take a look at this average product cost by cost element. So what this tells me is week on week, it tells me the costing, it shows me the costing information and the breakdown by different cost element. Yeah, I think we have just taken three cost elements here, material, overhead, and resource. Let's say in a typical business scenario, you would expect to see week five and week six have a relatively lesser uh, expenditure, so the overall costing would be slightly less. And if you see that the costing is just increasing from week five, six, seven, that gives me a message that, okay, something changed or I really started doing something different in my company because of which the costing pattern has changed over the last three, four weeks. So then I can get into the uh, details of that to understand where did I really spend or what were the different entities that I was trying to manufacture in the process. So that concludes the demo. Uh, let's get back to the presentation and back to the demo. All right, so we have an info sheet on our website. Mm -hmm. You can go to the website and uh, download this info sheet. It gives you basic information about the product that we've built, and, and it will also help you answer some of the questions as to uh, whom can you contact in the company to get further information on the product. And with that, we can open it up for uh, Q&A. Yermai? Yeah,